Meow, meow. Sa panahon ng mga special na pondo at confidential na pondo, pag-usapan natin ang Coco Levy Fund. Noong 1950s hanggang 1970s, malakas ang coconut industry ng Pilipinas. Karamihan sa mga probinsya, ito ang pinagkakakitaan. Ito rin ang second biggest export ng Pilipinas dati next to sugar. Kaya noong 1954, si President Magsaysay ang unang gumawa ng Coconut Development Fund under Republic Act 1145. Noong 1970s, gumawa si President Marcos Sr. ng maraming presidential decrees na mga amendments sa naunang batas para sa coconut industry. Isa na dyan yung Presidential Decree 232 na nagtatag ng Philippine Coconut Authority. Yung PD 961 naman created the Coconut Industry Investment Fund or CIIF. On paper, maganda ang intensyon. Paramihin ang produksyon, pabilisin ang processing from raw to finished products, pagalingin ang marketing at siguraduhin tumataas ang tubo ng mga magsasaka. Kaya naman nagbabayad ang mga farmers. Parang maganda ang hangarin pero hindi maganda ang pamamalakad ng may hawak sa pera. The Coco Levy Fund is estimated to have been around 100 to 150 billion pesos in assets. Nagkaroon ng korupsyon at pagnanakaw. Maraming coconut farmers ang nagbayad ng levies pero hindi na-register ang bayad nila sa Filcoa. Yung CIIF ang ginamit ng mga cronies ni President Marcos. The CIIF group of companies consisted of 14 oil milling and trading companies. The Marcos cronies were able to expertly hide their dealings through layers of companies with an army of well-paid lawyers and fund managers. After decades, the Supreme Court awarded some of the San Miguel corporation shares to the government, but the 17% remained with the estate of Dandin Covanco. The Supreme Court also awarded about 75 billion pesos to coconut farmers. Tapping the 75 billion from the SE ruling, President Duterte issued Executive Order 172 creating the Coconut Farmers and Industry Development Plan, setting the direction towards the coconut industry's rehabilitation and modernization to help the 2.5 million Filipino coconut farmers. Sounds familiar. The plan and the corresponding funds are being managed by the Department of Agriculture, led by President Marcos Jr., the son of the man who created and mismanaged the Coco Levy Fund. The controversial Maharlika Wealth Fund, which passed in Congress and is a priority legislation in the Senate in 2023, was filed by the grandson and nephew of the Coco Levy Fund guy. And once approved, the fund will be managed by the son of the Coco Levy Fund guy. Ako lang ba na pansin nyo rin yun? Baka ako lang may trust issues. Kasi masama pa rin ang loob ko sa Banko Pilipino. Ang motto nila, subok na matibay, subok na matatag. Si Hello Kitty pa ang mascot ng Happy Savers Club. Awa ng Diyos, hindi ko na nakuha mga inipon kong aginaldo nung bata ako dahil nagsara ang bangko. Masama rin ang loob ko sa CAP at Pacific Plans. Hindi ko na nakuha yung pera ko at walang nabilanggo for poor funds management. Suma-suma, maganda naman yung intensyon nitong mga pondong ito on paper. Depende na lang talaga kung sino ang namamahala. Ah, ba? Diba?